back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. We're gonna be talking about how to tap into your feminine energy. I'm definitely someone who resides more in their masculine energy. And first off, I wanna start by saying that, actually, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin. If you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you. I post a lot of content on self-development, spirituality, lifestyle content. And so if you're interested, please subscribe and also check out my other videos and see if there's anything that piques your interest. I'm definitely someone who naturally is in her masculine a little bit more and I think majority of people are now. Um, so feminine energy is something that is in all genders. It's not something that has to do with genders at all. It's just something that is kind of a part of the world. Um, for example, the moon represents the feminine energy and the sun represents the masculine energy. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen to kind of show you guys what the masculine and feminine energies represent. So for example, the feminine energy is a lot more of like that receptive side. It's a lot more about receiving and about being open and about nurturing to yourself and to others and to be creative and expressive. Whereas the masculine side is more about getting stuff done. It's more about you know, the output of tasks. It's more about being productive. And I think our society has definitely become a lot more in the masculine side because that is what naturally will benefit corporations and basically just the way that our society functions now. The best way to put it is that the feminine side is more inward and the masculine side is more outward. I was definitely someone who felt the need to have control. I didn't really have a lot of trust. I'm gonna talk about that in a second, um, but I wanted to be able to control everything. I wanted to be able to be just in my masculine energy and I didn't mean to be, I just happened to be. And it makes life a lot harder when you're trying to force everything and control everything. And so living from your feminine energy can definitely be very, 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 first of all, eye-opening. And also it can help you to live from a place of openness and just being able to see what the world has to offer rather than searching for it. It's just everything kind of comes towards you rather than you looking for something. Um, it's a lot more relaxed, a lot more going with the flow. What I meant by the way about having trust um, was I didn't really trust in myself as well as others or like the world around me. I was definitely living from a fear-based mentality, which I'm still trying to unlearn. I felt like the world was bad, there were so many bad things happening in the world, there were so many bad things happening to me and the people around me. Um, I felt like I couldn't trust myself and I didn't know this, but unknowingly I had a belief that if something bad was to happen, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to handle it. And so I had to build this trust with myself to show that yes, bad things may happen and things may go out of control, um, but I trust within myself to be able to take care of it and to be able to deal with it and to be able to have myself and to not abandon myself in the face of problems or conflict. As well as I think having like faith in God or the universe or whatever higher power you choose to believe in or you feel within yourself is true, um, having that belief makes it a lot easier because then you have something else to rely on. Speak less, listen more. This has everything to do with being receptive. If you're someone who is open to listening to what people say, how their beliefs are, what they feel, um, how their days are going, or whatever it is, when people speak to you, listen. I think for a long time, I myself was not someone who was able to listen. I would be like, you know, giving eye contact, doing the things, but I wasn't actually taking in what they were saying. My head was focused on other things. And I think being able to like pause all the other stuff and focus on someone and really connect with someone and listen to what they're saying is so beautiful and so powerful. Your relationships with people are gonna get a lot stronger. And as well as you're gonna learn from people, you're gonna start to see that everybody has a lesson to teach you. And another one is interrupting people. I have, I'm still working on this. If I get into a conversation with someone who's bringing out like passion, I interrupt them and I have to like remind myself like, okay, hey, be quiet, listen to what they're saying and then you can speak but it is hard so just make note of it and don't blame yourself or get mad at yourself if you mess up just you know try again and keep practicing i think this is really good because it also reminds you to listen to yourself so i think a lot of the times in our minds we're running this constant chatter of like da -da 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 -da, what am i gonna do groceries food gym like it's just constantly going on in our heads but when we're able to really start to listen to ourselves and to the people around us we can start to hear the things that are important for us so you'll start to notice that oh i've had this repetitive thought like five times today and it's a thought that i don't think is really good for me now i can look into it so start to look at what you're 
thinking in your mind and really start to listen to yourself as well as your body your body can show you a lot of problems like tension wise or I know, for example, like if you have anxiety, your hands might tingle or your legs might start to shake or you might start to notice your breathing is getting shallow or whatever it is. Just listen to your body, listen to your mind, listen to the people around you. The next thing is do not dim yourself. This is big because I feel like we're taught how to be, even for example, this video, how to be in your feminine energy. I am telling you a way that is right to be, but really the best way to be is just however you naturally feel. And I think a lot of the times we we dim ourselves to make other people more comfortable, and whether that has to do with the amount of money you make or your grades, or your appearance or your personality, your humor, whatever it is, we dim ourselves. And I'm not saying that every single person is gonna be open to you bragging about how much money you make because that's not it at all. Um, but you should have a few people that you feel comfortable being your absolute most authentic self as well as with yourself. I think a lot of us are not even comfortable with being ourselves alone. So when are you yourself or do you even know who that person is? So yeah, try and fall into just being yourself and not dimming yourself, saying what's on your mind and expressing how you feel and try to be more open, just at least with yourself. The next thing is soften. This is probably my favorite thing on this list. I try to do this frequently, just soften with yourself. So when you mess up, being more gentle with yourself when other people mess up being more gentle with them when there is traffic on the highway being more just soften like not everything has to be so painful and horrible and dramatic some things just are and we can just relax and make the best out of situations and be that flowy sweet energy we all are at our core i think you'll really really enjoy living from a place of being softened and not so hard and rigid and having this bold exterior or these walls built up. Softening is such a beautiful thing and I, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. The next thing is being open to receive. So what I mean by this is with everything, with compliments, with love, with gifts, with blessings. If you're someone who gets complimented and you automatically have to be like, oh no, like someone says, I love your shirt and you're like, oh, it was so expensive or, oh, it's just from blah, blah, blah. Like take the compliment, thank you. Like you should be able to have enough self-worth and enough knowing that you deserve the compliment that you're getting, that you feel comfortable getting complimented. And if that's not something that you have, I would say maybe work on affirmations, complimenting yourself, telling yourself that you're beautiful and doing all those things so that when someone else does it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable or weird or like you need to backtrack because you don't feel like you're worthy of the compliment. You are worthy of the compliment. And, and if you don't know that, you need to work on being able to know that and to know your worth. I also wrote here blessings and signs. So being able to be open to receiving blessings and signs. A lot of people take for granted the amount of signs and blessings that the universe gives us, whether it is an amount of money that you got that you weren't expecting to get or getting a gift from someone or, um, you know, just things that you enjoy. For example, for me, I love being out in nature and I feel like nature is constantly giving me little gifts of whether it's the bird that's sitting near chirping or whether it's the sun peering through the trees or, you know, whatever it is, I like to take those things as blessings and thank God for giving me those things. Hi, Meeks. Hi, crazy. So cute. And the more that you give thanks for those things, the more that they'll happen to you. Next one is confronting and sitting in your feelings. This one is hard and this one may seem like it's um, like in your masculine energy as well as like with the boundaries and respect, but it is actually in your feminine energy because being feminine is all about being soft, but also being strong. Confronting and sitting in your feelings, a lot of the times we can pretend like we're not hurt or pretend like something's not bothering us. And a lot of the times we don't even realize that we're doing that. So it takes a lot of internal work to be able to see things that are hurting you and the things that are causing problems for you try your best to actually confront your feelings and rather than trying to like figure them out this is something i am constantly trying to work on rather than feeling an uncomfortable feeling and trying to escape it by fixing the problem allow yourself to be in the feeling allow yourself to feel it and be okay with the fact that things don't feel that good right now be okay with the fact that you don't feel the happiest or whatever it is your feelings will eventually come to the surface in one way or another whether it's manifesting into your life or whether it's just 
you know, your constant thoughts that you have, you need to address whatever feelings you're feeling and give yourself the right to feel them. You deserve to feel your feelings. Even if you feel like you're crying over some stupid stuff, it's okay, like that's your feelings. They're valid, no matter what, they're valid. The next one is being present. This was actually my manifestation, my main manifestation for 2022. And I am so happy to say that I feel like I've really improved with that. I used to be someone who was super in my head, like constantly just in my head, creating stories and creating beliefs and just like a constant narrative going on in my head and i've been able to become so much more present meditation is a big one for this being able to be in your mind and with your eyes closed and just in your internal world and be able to be comfortable in it it's a hard thing to do and so if you're able to practice that you'll be able to do it throughout your daily life i'm not saying like you need to close your eyes constantly and meditate but when you're on a walk you'll be able to quiet your mind and just be the awareness that is experiencing all of it that there is. Next one is expression. This is huge for being in your feminine energy. Express yourself, whether it's singing, dancing, painting, whatever you feel feels right for you, do it. Whatever you enjoy doing as a child, integrate your inner child into your daily life or into your weekly life or whatever it is and do those things because I think we forget that that inner child isn't gone that inner child is still within us those experiences are still within us that life those feelings that person is still within us and we need to let them out and play we need to let them experience and enjoy themselves and feel safe and protected and you want to eventually get to a place where you feel like your current self is now the protector of that inner child and you're not neglecting that inner child so expression is a really really great way and i wanted to also say I think a big thing with expressing yourself is we feel the need to monetize everything as adults in this day and age with our society we feel like everything has to be able to bring in an income and if you're not good at something if it's not perfect and pretty and something that someone would be willing to pay for then it's not worth doing but that's not true if you enjoy dancing and you're not a professional dancer that's fine if you enjoy singing and you don't plan to be the next taylor swift that's fine if you enjoy painting or doing poetry or whatever but you don't actually think you're that great at it but it feels good to you please do it it's so important and those are the things that make life full of joy you know it's not the huge vacations or the really really big milestones or buying the dream car those things are great but it's the daily little things that you do to let yourself be you that will end up making you feel more taken care of and happier and living a life that's actually worth living and that's fueling you and that you're excited to be in. The last thing I want to talk about is nurturing yourself and others. I love to do self-care and I want to talk about the difference between self-care and self-maintenance. Maintenance for me is getting my lashes done, getting my hair done. I don't enjoy, and that's not true, I enjoy getting those things done, but I don't feel taken care of by those things but I do feel taken care of when I'm doing my skincare or when I'm saying my affirmations or when I'm rubbing my body with oil or when I am doing Pilates or when I'm doing yoga notice that when you're doing things that are considered self-care whether it feels like something that's a task that needs to be done which would be considered to me self-maintenance or if it's something that makes you feel really taken care of and makes you feel nurtured by yourself and you want to focus on doing those things. You want to make sure that you're nurturing yourself and making yourself feel cared for. Whether that means ordering food in for yourself. I love ordering food in for myself and having like a girl's night with just me and watching the TV or having a glass of wine or whatever it is. That makes me feel really taken care of. It makes me feel like I'm on a date with myself and that I'm nurturing myself. And that's important. So do things that give you that sense of feeling. And if you're struggling to find those sort of things, maybe look at your perspective on the things you're doing. If you do your skincare and you're annoyed that you're having to do it, or you feel like every single time you do it, you just don't have time or whatever it is, you might need to do a little bit of a mindset shift in order to see the things that you're doing for yourself as a benefit rather than something that you have to do. That was this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in seeing more videos like that, definitely let me know. Also check out my other videos, subscribe to my channel, and I love you and I will see you in the next one.